Battle to the death. African cichlid tanks versus saltwater tanks. Okay, not a real battle to the death. I don't want PETA showing up at my door. Better hurry. Here we go. We'll be pitting these two tank types against each other head to head in eight different categories. Winner of each category gets a point. We'll go in deep and then we'll tally up the points afterward and figure out which one's the winner. So which one is better? Well, let's kick this thing off with equipment. African cichlids require more than usual community fish need. First of all, they need a bigger tank, and most people recommend a 75 gallon minimum for peacocks and haps and a 55 for Mbuna. I think you're probably safe with the 55 gallon Mbuna setup because they typically aren't racing across the expanse of your aquarium over and over and over and over again like peacocks and haps do. But those peas and haps are going to need a 125 tank size, bare minimum. Don't fool yourself otherwise unless you hardly have any of them and they're just on the smaller side. You can use a sump or some canister filters and some people even use HOBs. Just stick a couple of those babies on your tank and make it work. Having bigger filters will definitely help with the dilution of contaminants as well as keeping that water clean and clear though. Saltwater tanks on the other hand can be smaller but they're also more needy requiring a lot of extra equipment and supplies like salt mix, extra test kits, a hydrometer, a protein skimmer, power heads, and you're pretty much looking at a sump system for salt water. Canisters and HOBs generally aren't a good idea for much bigger saltwater tanks. Saltwater fish generally need additional water volume and sumps open the door to more life supporting equipment that you can use. Oh yeah, you'll also need special lights that are so expensive you'll pay for them with your tears. <laughs> Well, I suppose you can get cheaper ones, but if you're setting up a saltwater tank, you obviously have money and you'll be buying the good stuff. <laughs> yes. By the way, in case you don't know, there is a difference between a reef tank and a regular saltwater tank. The reef tanks have coral and are more expensive than your regular tanks. But let's face it, if you have a saltwater tank, you're going to have a reef tank because they're super cool. So overall, it's an easy victory for Africans here. It's just a much simpler setup costing a lot less money. Point goes to my nut job Africans. You will subscribe. Ding ding. All right, let's move on to the beauty pageant. And if you're comparing African cichlids to community tanks, it's no comparison, man. These guys have blown them away. But you put them against saltwater fish, that's a different thing entirely. My Alcatraz inmates are gorgeous. We're talking super hot. Just look at those blues and reds and whatever other colors you're seeing in here. It's what makes it worth dealing with their nasty qualities I talked about in my last video called African Cichlids Suck. And I'm not kidding, that was a real video title. Don't judge me. I mean, it's technically a true statement, even though I love them. I just love fish that have a lot of sucky qualities is all. My point is that they're gorgeous. Let me give you just a few more seconds to absorb their beauty. And remember, a lot of these guys aren't even colored up yet because they were just added to the tank recently. And they think that if they show their true colors, someone will put a hit on them and they'll wind up buried in six feet of concrete. African cichlids are angry boys in case you didn't know that already. But even though they're so beautiful, saltwater fish, well, did you ever see the movie Daddy's Home? Okay, well what that movie was really representing was African cichlids, Mark Wahlberg, versus freshwater community fish, Will Ferrell, versus saltwater fish, John Cena. And instead of muscles, it's beauty we're comparing. My point is, saltwater fish have unmatchable beauty. And the way they move is so elegant and smooth. African cichlids, on the other hand, <laughs> they're clumsy oafs. And some people come over to my house and ask if Alcatraz is actually a saltwater tank. I take it as a compliment, but I don't take it too much to heart because I immediately know that they don't really know that much about fish keeping. They just see fish and fish are fish, but we know the difference, don't we? This point belongs to the saltwater crowd. No contest. In my last video that I just mentioned, I spoke about how African cichlids are a black hole for your money. They'll just suck it right up. Ferk the second, the second, my most expensive fish, he came in at like $150, which is a lot for a fish. But when you're comparing it to saltwater fish, it ain't that much. I mean, you can certainly buy some saltwater fish for less than that. You can even get some for under $100. And I usually spend around $40 to $70 for my Africans from good breeders like Ron Cichlids. And that is expensive, I mean, at least for me. But saltwater fish are mostly wild caught. I'll talk more on that later. So most of them require a lot more effort to catch than African cichlids, which are mostly tank raised. And because they're more difficult to catch, then you're going to pay a lot more for that. Before I started this video, I knew that they were expensive fish, but I thought the high end would be like maybe around mid $100 or so. So I'm researching this just before I make this video and my eyes can't believe what they see. $150 might only get you a scale off of one of the more expensive saltwater fish. And that's without a frame. Just the plastic Ziploc baggie. 
Some of these guys cost around $300 to $700, and I bet a lot more than that as well. I'm not saying they're not worth it, because if you have that kind of money to spend on fish and it makes you happy, then no problem. But if you're like most of us out there, then that kind of money for a fish is kind of a bummer. I mean, $700 buys a lot of cheeseburgers. And I like cheeseburgers. Point Africans. And by the way, if you're in the market for some African cichlids, check out Ron Cichlids, who is also a sponsor of this channel. Load some high quality fish and or food in your cart and use the code CICLIDCHARMER10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Don't say I never did nothing for you. So when I'm doing water changes on Alcatraz, I just stick my Cichet Ultra Zero pump in the tank, suck the water out, put the chlorinator in, pump the water right back in straight from the tap. But with saltwater tanks, it's not the same story. With salt water, you have to mix your salt water and then let it sit for a while. From what I know, people keep their water in huge plastic containers. I've actually heard of people using large plastic garbage cans what? while it brews and becomes the perfect blend for those expensive fish of theirs. You need to filter your water first too, or use RO water and then buy salt if you're going to make the water and mix it yourself. But there's also the option of buying it from a local fish store if you like. But then you have to spend extra money and take it back home. Then you have to pack it in the house and finally pour it in the tank. It's more expensive and time consuming than simple African cichlid water changes. So if you're a little on the crazy side, then all this extra work on a saltwater tank might not be a problem. I mean, I'm a little on the crazy side and I love doing water changes in my tanks. I'm just saying I might not be that crazy. On top of that, you have to do a lot of water changes with salt water. To be honest, I know it's a lot more than you have to do with community freshwater tanks, but you have to do a lot of water changes with African cichlids too. I'm just not positive if saltwater requires a lot more than you do with African cichlids. But I do know that saltwater tanks are less forgiving if you forget or delay your water changes. And not only does that water quality suffer if you get lazy, but your tank can actually get riddled with purple algae and white deposits everywhere. Ugly. Saltwater? Too much work. Point? Africans. The variety of African cichlids available can make your head swoon. I mean, there's a lot of options. But pit these guys up against saltwater fish, and you might not be so impressed with the Africans anymore. And it's really pretty obvious why. I mean, African cichlids come from itty bitty lakes in Africa, and saltwater fish come from huge oceans. They're everywhere, man. Well, not everywhere, but compared to the three rift lakes in Africa, they are. So you can definitely expect that there would be more species of them than you would see in African cichlids. You might not be able to afford many of those species, though, but they do exist. Looking at my boys, you can see that there's a wide variety of African cichlids to choose from too. Their colors and body shapes in many cases are quite unique. But you will run out of options for new and unique African cichlids after a while. And this won't happen with saltwater fish. It's just a never ending supply of unique and gorgeous fish. If you're looking at your local fish store or big box store, then you probably won't see that many saltwater fish. You'll have to go online before you start seeing all that variety. This is pretty much the same with African cichlids too. But once you go online, you'll see more varieties of saltwater fish than you will Africans. Score one point for saltwater fish. You can get a huge sense of accomplishment with an African cichlid tank. I mean, right now I have all these different insane inmates living with each other and they're getting along just fine. I mean, at least right now they are. But how does that compare to the sense of accomplishment you get with a saltwater tank? With your African cichlid tank setups, you have to be really careful with your stocking of the tank. You can read fish profiles and get an idea of which species will work together, but you can easily buy a rogue fish bred by the devil himself <laughs> that disturbs the balance in your tank and he wants everyone dead right now. Or a fish can be fine, but then snap after two years of good behavior and decide that your tank would be better off with just him in it. So he'll do you a favor by eliminating all your unnecessary fish for you. Isn't that nice? So I feel pretty good when I have a beautiful African cichlid tank full of psycho nut jobs and they're all getting along. I mean, I don't think it's that easy for everyone to do, but it's really not that much when you think about all the time and effort that people have to put into their reef tanks. And it isn't just the fish and all the equipment. You have to know what you're doing with coral too. They put so much time and money into their setups that they could feed a small country with their expenditures. And I mean specifically hand feed everyone in the small country. That's how much time these tanks take. The fish keepers that can do this are on another level. The only bad part about this is that sometimes they know it and they'll make sure that you know that your tank might be okay, but you should get rid of it as soon as possible and switch to real fish. Why well, happen to think that I have real fish? Thank you very much. However, points still earned for saltwater fish once again for a sense of accomplishment. 
I already spoke about water changes and how saltwater tanks are less forgiving than African cichlid tanks, but they're less forgiving about everything. I mean, even the smallest mess up and you can end up with a huge disaster with a saltwater tank. As you all may know, I recently failed to add dechlorinator to Alcatraz and lost a lot of my fish. So don't get me wrong, you can mess up with your African cichlids and it will end in disaster. I'm just saying that there are a lot more things that can go wrong with your saltwater tank. And it doesn't have to be such a big mistake to cause a huge disaster. And when that happens, you not only experience loss because your fish friends have died, but they are also, as I've already mentioned, so expensive to replace. I prefer dealing with fewer possibilities that what I'm doing is going to kill all my fish. But maybe you like living life on the edge. Well, if I was giving out points for being a nut job, then you reefers would win it. But I'm not, so this point is taken by African cichlids. Okay, you're right. Nut job point goes to saltwater fish keepers. Yay! So let's talk about, and this one's probably the biggest one, at least for me, about how these fish are bred or caught when you're buying stock for your African cichlid tanks compared to saltwater tanks. Most African cichlids are tank raised. Sure, the originals came from Rift Lakes in Africa at one point, and some still are, but most of these crazy fish are bred in tanks, so they've never seen the huge lake their species is native to. They're not missing a whole lot by being in a small glass box is my point. And you know what? Even if you have a 300 gallon tank for your fish, that's still a small glass box compared to the body of water they originally came from. For this reason, I don't buy fish that are classified as F0. What F0 means is that the fish you're buying was actually wild caught. F1 means the fish that you're buying is a fish whose parents were wild caught, but your fish was born and raised in captivity. It's still troublesome for me, but what else can you do? With most saltwater fish, they aren't bred in captivity. They're wild caught right from the ocean, stripped out of their huge home, shipped to the distributors in super small containers, then shipped to you to finally wind up in your small glass box. I know a lot of reefers out there probably have good reasons why this doesn't bother them, but I have to say that it does bother me. If you've watched my videos, then you know how passionate I am about getting the right size tank for your fish. And by right size, I actually mean above and beyond the advised minimum tank size. My 180 gallon was originally going to have large American cichlids in it. I had my list planned out for some Oscars and other large Americans, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that it wasn't gonna work for me. If I have fish like that, then I'm gonna give them more room than six feet. You may disagree with me and that's fine, but that's how I feel. So I passed on what I really wanted and have angels and geos in there. Oh, and my red-tailed shark and pleco, of course. But with saltwater fish that have had free swim since they were born in the ocean, putting them in an aquarium just breaks my heart. I couldn't do it. I'm not saying that you're a bad person if you have a reef tank, but even so, this point is going to the Africans. So it looks like we have a tie. Africans four and saltwater fish four. But you know what? We could compare one more thing, and that's the ease of moving these tanks. If you have to move to a new location, no one wants to move a tank of any kind, but most people would rather die than move a saltwater tank. Point, Africans. Africans are the winner. But you know what? The real question here isn't what I think, but what you guys think. Which one do you think is the winner? Africans or saltwater tanks? Oh, and guess what? In just over a week, I'll be in Mexico swimming with some of those saltwater fish that I've been showing you. I'm pretty excited about that and I hope to get some video. You've been watching The Cichlid Charmer and as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.